Why do some relationships feel like a struggle while some feel so easy? Well, there is a science behind healthy relationships and today we are breaking it down. I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior, I'm a neurologist and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about your brain, your health and everything you can do to make your life better. Subscribe to this channel, you will see more such videos on your timeline. Today we are talking about love and relationships and it's about time because it's been a while since we've talked about love on this channel. If you want to see such more videos, let me know. Now in any relationship, whether it's a new one or an old one, there are certain things happening in the brain that decide how that relationship is going. That brain chemistry is writing your love story. So what are those things happening in your brain when you're in love, when you're in a relationship? To put it very simply, in a relationship, let's assume that there are two people. Now with any two people, when they get into a relationship, they are looking for two things. They're looking for safety and comfort to spend time together, but they're also looking for excitement to grow. So every relationship story is a seesaw between how much comfort and safety do you get and how much exploration and growth can you find. If two people are able to balance these two things of growth and exploration, that relationship will be a good one. Now, there are some chemicals in the brain that come together to write this story of growth and exploration. These four are the main characters of every love story in the world. So let's look at each one of them and what role do they play in your love story. First is dopamine. When you meet someone that you have a crush on, your brain releases dopamine. That is when you feel that sense of anticipation, that you want to keep meeting that person, looking at that person. You start imagining a life where you can be with that person. All that is anticipation, motivation. Dopamine is responsible for all of that. Next up, immediately after that is adrenaline because it's not enough to just anticipate something, you also need to do something. So when you think about going and approaching them, talking to them, that feeling of butterflies in your stomach, your heartbeat rising, you breathing faster, all that is adrenaline going through your body. This is because your brain thinks it is taking such a risk. What if they say no? What if they don't like me? What if something goes wrong? All this is a risk that your brain needs to take and your adrenaline level goes up. This is similar to any other adventure sport like bungee jumping or skydiving. The beginning of every love story is basically you jumping out into the unknown. Jai Mata Di, God knows what will happen. Let's try and figure it out. That is what adrenaline does. So this combination of adrenaline and dopamine is what gives you that spark at the beginning of a relationship. Now, many people think that is what love is. Love is that sense of excitement, that feeling of, oh wow, something amazing is happening. And that's true. That is part of love. But that doesn't stay exactly the way it is. Because biologically speaking, dopamine is not designed to remain high all the time. As you start pursuing something, dopamine levels start to fall. And once you get that thing, your dopamine levels will not be at that high state anymore because dopamine is a molecule of anticipation. You are anticipating a reward. Once you get the reward, dopamine falls and now dopamine is directed at something else. Similarly, adrenaline is a hormone of uncertainty. If you are not sure of whether you will get it or not, once you are in a relationship, you don't need to have adrenaline high anymore because now you are with them. There is certainty. So both dopamine and adrenaline start falling once you are in a relationship. So that spark you might think will go away. But the good news is it is replaced by two other beautiful hormones, which is serotonin and oxytocin. Serotonin has the job of making you value what you have. It is a feel good hormone in the long term sense. Serotonin is what gives you that sense of peace, calm, that feeling you get when you come home. That is serotonin. So as the relationship between two people progress beyond that initial stage and they start loving each other for who they are, serotonin goes up. And the other beautiful thing that happens is oxytocin level starts to go up. Oxytocin is what happens when you get bound with somebody. So oxytocin actually changes the networks in your brain. You now start thinking of the two of you 
as one person. So both of you will form one identity in your brain. So when I start thinking about my partner, I am kind of thinking about myself. So what is good for my partner is good for me. So in a way, love is a form of selfishness, except that the self includes the other one as well. Now, this sense of unity and bonding is what makes you sacrifice your own happiness for that other person. You will do anything for that other person because that other person is you. This is also the reason why there is so much pain and suffering in love. Because if that other person leaves you or if you lose that other person for any reason, it is like losing a part of yourself. Because again, oxytocin makes you think that they are a part of you. So a breakup hurts so badly because in a way it is almost like amputation. A part of you is being cut off and recovery from a breakup is your brain rewiring its networks to make you realize that you are still whole. You are still a complete person even if that other person is not there in your life anymore. So recovery from a breakup is neuroplasticity at its core. Your brain is rewiring your identity to think of yourself independent of the other person. So what makes a healthy relationship? A good balance of all these four things. Excitement from adrenaline, motivation and anticipation from dopamine, that feeling of calm and peace from serotonin and that feeling of belonging and home from oxytocin. Ask yourself which of these things is missing in your relationship and you will be able to figure out how to fix it. So to boost serotonin, you can do more regular activities together. It can be as simple as taking daily morning walks or planning dinners together. Anything that sets into a routine can increase serotonin. To boost oxytocin, favor activities that bring you physically close. Hugging, kissing, sleeping together, having emotional conversations, showing vulnerability. All of this boosts oxytocin. For dopamine, focus on novelty and exploration. Do new things, celebrate achievements and move together. Movement is a great way to boost dopamine in both of you. So one good couple dopamine hack is to learn a new sport or a new dance form together because that ticks off all these boxes. Now finally, there is adrenaline. This is tricky because adrenaline goes up when you are in stress and very often couples who've been together for a long time might end up fighting simply to create that stress so that they feel adrenaline because it reminds them of the spark that they had in the early days of the relationship. You will also see this in toxic relationship where they'll fight, they'll feel that spark, they'll misunderstand that to be love and they'll go back into that loop. But adrenaline and stress are actually not a part of long-term love stories. You can have stress from external forces, but to create stress from each other is not a healthy way of bringing two people close. So I hope this roadmap helps you navigate your relationship. You can use such neuroscience knowledge to make your life better. And if you want to learn more such uh, neuroscience hacks, you should subscribe to my channel and also check out my workshops. I will link them below. They are accessible to everybody. I've designed them in a way that anyone of any age group and academic background can learn neuroscience better. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone. Take care.